Welcome everyone, this is number 49, learn the rules here with a deck profile on my Shadow Paladin deck that I used for regionals today, sorry, two days ago, on um, the 8th I believe, yes, on the 8th of August, which was New York regional um, qualifiers for the uh, new 2015 North American, sorry no, 2015 World Championships for Carpet Vanguard. So anyways, here we have uh, my sleeves for my ladies here. If you can tell what I'm playing, and well by the title it should tell you what it is. Uh, I don't know this anime, I uh, would like to watch it soon, because I like this character so far. The other characters I've seen, they would look alright, but I like this one so far. Anyways, so here off we're going to start off with the grade zeros of the deck. We're going to start off with the starter. Here we have Promising Knight David. David's skill is Generation Break 1. It will act as a Retire 2 um, if you needed to use it for one of your skills. Like if you need to use one of your um, Shadow Paladin skills to retire something, like retire multiple amounts, he will count as two retires or two units to be retired as. So like Phantom Blaster Dragon requires three, he will count as two of them, and then you just need to retire one more unit and you're pretty much good. Also when it comes down to Phantom uh, Blaster Dragon Diablo or Diablo Phantom Blaster Dragon, whatever the fuck that thing's name is you would use this in um, in that part to basically just retire it and uh, another card as well so basically you're retiring too and your opponent's retiring too as well so you guys have that easy time giving me one moment I'm gonna move something real quick actually you know what, screw it, I'm gonna leave it right there because I forgot to take out something before I even started recording but it's alright, no matter Alright, anyways, next we're going to start off with, whoa, our triggers, which shouldn't be too hard. Whoops. To know what our triggers are, we're going to start off with the four, Black Crow Witch Aina, which I believe, I forgot which one has its real name. I think this one's Aina and the draw trigger is not Aina, but anyways. So we're running the four vanilla crits, and then we're running, of course, the BTO3, GBTO3, critical triggers from the wit of the witches, um, which is a uh, witch of the black, witch of black do doves, uh, going. Her skill is when your vanguard's in legion. Sorry, during the turn, if you have a witch vanguard that's in legion, um, she gets a uh, continuous skill. Well, she has that's her continuous skill, but she gains an axe skill. Which is, um, put this unit to the top of your deck. If your opponent has two or more grade zeros on the board, on their, you know, on their, on their, yeah, on their board, you minus 5,000 to your opponent and then shuffle your deck. Basically, you just got this on board, and your opponent has two zeros, put it on top of your deck, and then shuffle it, and then your opponent minus 5,000 power. For the turn, of course. Not forever, I wish, but, you know, that would be broken. Anyways. So, that's how that critical stands. Then now we use four... Lizard Witch ain't it? The draw trigger, my most favorite card in Vanguard because of the artwork and well, I love. I just love the card. I really do. I love the artwork. I'm trying to collect fifty, I need ten more in, a card, in order to make my fifty of it. Anyways, um, that's the closest I ever come to making fifty of a card. Next would be Witch of Black Cats, Milkra. Milkra is basically just a heal trigger for witches and well, she's. It's all nice to have the witch triggers because it's just. It's cute. It's cool. I like it. Anyways, so that is the traditional triggered lineup for the witches. Really, nothing to be surprised about. I mean, some people would run the stands instead of the draw triggers, only for the fact that the stand trigger is when you call and your opponent has two grid zeros or more. So, charge one on flip of damage, which is on call, but uh, I'd rather not use it, only for the fact that um, I'd rather have more crits and a, and a hand size when I need to. So. Next, we're gonna go with grade ones. So now here we have four little witch, little skull witch in the main. This is the perfect guard from the legend deck. This card's all right, not so bad, but in a way, I kind of want to make it um karma, karma collector. But uh, because uh, this is kind of needed, karma collector is needed in this deck to unflip some damage. But anyways, I really don't really need. A witch perfect guard is just really to make it look nicer and karma collector would also kind of help out this deck a lot more 
because um, I do counter blast a hell of a lot in this deck, so I kind of do need the unflipping damage. I mean, yeah, I need unflipping power. I would run the Cray Elemental Unflipper, but um, yeah, I'm not going to use it. So, anyways, so this is the uh, critical trigger. Sorry, this is the uh, perfect guard for it. Uh, skill is perfect guard the vanguard only, cannot perfect guard a rear guard, and if you do have a copy of it in the drop zone, you must draw a card and then discard a card from hand. So that's basically when you pay the cost to guard for it, draw, and then discard a card from hand. You must do it if you have a copy in the drop. If you don't have a copy in the drop, well then you're fine. But this can lead to deck out if you're using a non-legion deck. But since I am using a, a legion deck, this can be quite helpful. Uh, next would be for which of precious stones Donna on call and uh, soul blast one from the soul choose one of your opponent's occupied rear guard circles and they select a grade zero from their drop zone and place it on that occupied rear guard circle the unit on that rear guard circle gets retired of course so that's pretty much how this card is played it's just basically for the witches to get their get your opponent have their zeros on board and to get their plays off with um, nagging you power or just getting advantages off. So really that's all this card is for. You run four of it, it's very helpful for the witches and it, it works. It really just assists them very well. Sometimes you do not have soul, and not, you don't have enough soul to actually do things, but it still is a helpful card in the uh, later game. Now we're going to play um, for Witch of Ruination Skethich, the 10k attacker for witches, you have a Witch Vanguard, if this unit attacks, it gets t plus 3,000 powers at the end of battle, I believe. Yep, until the end of battle. So this is a 10k attacker for um, witches, uh, just pretty self-explanatory, she's just really good just to attack rear guards and vanguard if they're not on 11k base, if they're 10k base, it's good to attack them, or it's just good for like, um, when you minus them power, it's still a good attacker to use against them because it's a 10k versus like a, a 6k or which is it's still a 5k drop but it's something still to make them drop out of their hand when you know you minus the power or enough you know and it's pretty good I still like the card it's very useful next we have two cherishing knights and Brenwin the ditch for strides I would probably take out one Donna for a Brenwin but the only thing is I kinda need as many witches as possible just in case if I run into getting my um my uh, what the hell's her name? I don't. I haven't even used her. Rias, the Grade Three Legion. So I kind of need as many witches as possible. And just in case if I do have three of them in my hand, and I just have that one that could have been a Donna, I kind of might be screwed. But yeah, still. So best brand one for you. She's basically just dish for stride. Discard it from your hand for stride, and it gets plus two grade. So it'll basically become a Grade Three for. You know, making it easier for you to stride. On call skill, really not useful for this deck, which is basically reveal a grade 3 from your hand, search your deck for a cleric or a dragon, and then add it to your hand and discard a card from your hand. Uh, really not useful because I don't run cleric sword in this deck, so yeah. It's only useful really just for the striding. Just for the striding. Now on to our grade 2s. There we go. On to our grade twos, we have four inspection witch Deidre. Four, okay, we have four of them. Uh, same skill as Donna on call to rear guard circle, only rear guard circle, not vanguard circle, just like Donna. Exact same effect. Choose one of your opponent's occupied rear guard circles, they select the grade zero from the drop zone and place it on that um, occupied rear guard circle. And the unit that is on that originally gets retired and goes to the drop zone. So that's pretty much all this card does, is really just to, again to set up the, the board for your witch plays. All of them. Next we have 1 SP and then 3 rares, Witch of Reality Feme. Uh, this 12k attacker beat stick basically for um, witches, nothing much else to say, just a 12k beat stick. Uh, just very, it's very useful and it's good for when you neg your opponent. Just nothing much else to really talk about. That's just really it. Two cards that I'm about to take out because I've never really used their skill, but it is a bit useful, but not that much. But, um, hey, whatever. It is, re um, what the hell's his name? Adroit Revenger Tyron. Ty Tyre. Tyronon. 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 I don't know what the fuck you say. It. It's Tyrone, but it's not Tyrone. Anyways. 
Uh, this guy's skill is when your Vanguard Legions count us one, give your Vanguard the skill. Your when uh, your Vanguard attacks, your opponent must retire units in order to guard from the hand. It's all right, not so bad, but in the Witch deck, it's really not that useful for the fact that when you make units zeros, your opponent has that mindset of, to where like, eh, I have zeros on board, I might as well just retire them. They will retire them though, no matter what, but like, it it's still good that you give them that mindset to just retire anything because that just basically solidifies like getting rid of units. You know, but like when you have, they have like key other units that you want gone, and you're trying to force it out. They won't really like um, discard those units. They'll discard the triggers or the zeros that I already have on board, and they don't care about. So really, this is all okay and not okay at the same time. It it doesn't doesn't help as much really. I, I just probably might take it out for more 10k vanillas and stuff. And uh, or just like uh, think think of something else with um, for witches really, like maybe the new grade two that's coming out in GBT04 for um Shadow Paladin witches. I might put that in in here for these two. And next for the last grade two, we have one tech of Comet Witch Serva, the 10k vanilla, as I was talking about just now. Really, just defensive purposes, and it's a witch, and just helps me out when really our grade two ride or just you know I need to attack something. Just, just a beater. Nothing much else. Now we go on to the grade threes. Mostly the final part of our whole little video here. We have four mesmerizing witch Fiona. One being an SP, which is right here. Uh, she has three axe skills, which is kind of like a big amount of skills. But then again, it's not as much of uh, that uh, Escovita Blaster has. But anyways, yeah. So here we go uh, with Fiona. Fiona's legion skills. She legion with Feme. Uh, you return four, nor four, four units from your drop zone into your deck to search for a Feme, and then Legion. Uh, third, second skill is um, Counter Blast 2. If your Vanguard's on Legion, you may active, you may pay the cost, which is select two of your opponent's occupied rearguard circles. They reveal the top ten cards to you, so you can be sure they're not cheating and saying what, like, um, you know, oh, there's no zeros on the, on the top of ten of my deck. So that's why they reveal it to you. They reveal it to you, but they have to select two zeros from that top ten and place them on those occupied rearguard circles that you selected. Mind you, if there is one occupied rearguard circle, sorry, if there is one zero in that top ten, which it has happened for me, um, they they can choose which one of the two occupied rearguard circles that you have selected. So that's the uh, downside of that. And it recently happened to me, but not at regionals. But actually, no, it did happen at regionals once. Kind of sucked for me, but hey, whatever. It, it lost me the match. Yeah. And third ability is if your opponent has two or more zeros on board, retire a copy of a card in your Vanguard Circle. Basically, um, on your Rearguard Circle, you retire one of them. So basically, if you have a Fiona or a Feme on the Rearguard Circle and your opponent has two or more, you may retire. Uh, well, that's if you're in Legion, you have the Feme as an option. But if you just have Fiona and you have a copy of Fiona in your hand, you call it, retire it, draw two cards. If your opponent has two or more zeros on board already, without using her her main skill, it's it's very useful when you want to get some cards in hand. So next would be call to switch Rias in a two as two. Her ability really is a finisher ability. I really haven't used her much. I actually haven't used her at all. I know I used her once in um, regionals. It was okay. It was not so bad. Uh, skill was but skill is legion legions with Deidre. Um, return for find Deidre, legion. Uh, legion skill is when this card performs legion, choose one of your witch rear guards and retire it. Your opponent is minus five thousand power for each zero they have on their on their field. So this doesn't follow the two or more scheme. This just basically says minus five thousand of how many they have of how many zeros they have on board. So if you worked on the whole time just making them zeros. And uh, if you rode on this, rode to this girl, and then just called Deidre Donna's, Deidre Donna's, and just tried to minus, I'm sorry, make their unit zeros again, and you have Rias still there, then you use Rias skill to Legion, and then you minus them 25 if they have a total of um, five units that are all zeros, and if they have five units, even you free me to abuse that skill and five zeros in the drop zone. But yeah. That's that's pretty much what this card is used for, just for a finisher. The third skill is something no one uses because it's basically a smaller version of this, but it's still a Counter Blast 2, which is sad. So Counter Blast 2, check top 5, choose one of your opponent's occupied rearguard circles, 
and they reveal the top five of their deck and just find a zero among it and place it on their occupied deck. This is more of something that no one would use because it'll just miss most of the time because of the top five. And yeah, it's not that good. So now the last card that I'm going to use, which I actually like and I figured out now of how useful this card is, and it's actually won me a game or two, and it's quite fun, I enjoy it very much, is Sharp Fanguage Fodla. She's from BT15. Uh, her skill is basically on call to Vanguard Rearguard Circle, uh, Kind of Blast 1. Search your deck for two grade zero Shadow Paladin cards and call them to Rearguard Circle. That's pretty much it. So. The plan with this is really just to call two of the um, Witch of Black Crow, Witch of Black Doves going. You basically just call these over and over. You're on Fina or Riaz, Legion, 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 whatever. Then call her out. Call Gwains. Put them back to the deck. Minus ten. If you use Riaz, you already minus your opponent as it is already. If you're on Fiona, you're just minusing power as it is anyways, so you can wait for Riaz's turn. Then if you had two if you had two of these in hand, you had two counter blasts open still, call both. Uh counter blast two, call four of these. Well, really just call one at a time to call two, then use their skills to put them back on top of the deck when your Vanguard's in Legion, and then minus some power. Then do it again with the second one, call them back out, minus your opponent's Vanguard and power, and it's just ridiculous. It's it's really a fun fun deck. I might made a brawler player go negative 16 at New York, but I still lost the game. Still a fun ass match though. I loved that game. It was pretty really really fun. Uh, I don't remember if he was a YouTuber or not because uh, I don't really follow that many. But um yeah, but that's really the whole deck. The strides uh, were kind of just self-explanatory. I had. Uh, borrowed two Orgeyser Dragons from my friend of mine. Uh, he's really cool and very good, good man. Um, Orgeyser Dragon skill is kind of us one, so us one. Select a copy of him from your G zone face and flip him face up. Uh, retire two when, upon attack. By the way, this is all the cost. Uh, retire two units, two of your own rear guards, um, and then reveal the top two cards. And uh, if they're grade ones or less, you get five thousand power for each. So if you reveal one that's a one and one that's a three, you only get five thousand power. But if you reveal two ones from the top of your deck, there you get ten thousand power. <coughs> and then the uh, next ability, uh, no, the, continuing on that, you just that's pretty much it with the skill. And then you just trouble drive check, and that's it. Um, that's really how the stride is made for. So that's why David's in here for the Orgeyser turn on when you first stride. He would Orgeyser would be your first stride, and yeah, you would retire this thing for Orgeyser. Anyways, uh, another thing would be Reaper. Reaper is just there because just to like basically maybe just call grade one when he hits the Vanguard on stride. Another one would be uh, Madius. Um, usually it would be it wouldn't really be Reaper in the deck, but it would be two Madu Elemental Rain Madu. Uh, skill is if you have a nine K. I'm sorry, if you have a ten K or less heart, you may select the grade three from your drop zone and add it to your hand. So when you're in Legion. Your 9k grade 2 that is on your Vanguard Circle technically counts as a 10k or less heart. You don't have to select it. You can still select your grade 3, but you still have a 10k or less heart. So you're still able to grab a 3 from your drop zone. So if you discarded a 3 for your stride, you can get it right back immediately. Just so basically it's a free stride turn. And yeah. So you use 2 mod Madus. And then 4 Diablos because Diablo is a thing and it actually helps you win games. And you can use it in this deck. You don't need a blaster or heart or nothing like that. Which I was quite surprised that this thing wasn't very specific of what to be... You know what to be used in for shadow paladins. This is a staple for every shadow paladin deck, most likely. Most likely, not not wouldn't say like every single one, but most likely again, everyone would probably use this guy because his skill is kind of us one. Flip a copy of him face up. You need a two um, cards and face up in the G zone, or if you use the skill, um, two or more, and um, he gets ten thousand in critical and an ability when the this unit attacks. Retire three of your units. You may. Retire three of the units. If you do, your opponent must retire two in order to guard from their hand. So that's pretty much it, and uh, that's all he is for. So if your opponent has like one card on the field and just their vanguard, vanguard and the one rear guard, you just use this guy and just say okay, goodbye. You know, because they can't really guard from hand no more, and they have the one rear guard circle, which happened to one person that I faced. She kind of left out um, Lulu on the board, and then I used. 
Diablo on her, and I was kind of sad that she didn't notice that, but it's okay. The game was alright, and I won that match, and then, yeah. I won first two rounds with this deck, and then the last two rounds I didn't really care much, because I really just wanted to go free fighting to get promos, and, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I I won two rounds, and lost two rounds. But my, those last two rounds were like the best rounds I've had in, in the in the whole entire day because it, it was really fun matches. Uh, first one, what this? I think the last one was a uh, fuck. It was, I know it was the brawler. The fourth one was a brawler. Third match, I forgot what it was, but it was a really fun match. I'm trying to remember right now, actually. I'm sorry if I'm taking up time because we already went to 20 minutes on this video. Shoot! What was it? I faced Shadow Paladins, which is just a legend deck, some weird Oracle Think Tank deck, and I faced... Damn it, what the hell was that third match? I don't even remember. Was it Gold Paladins? No, it wasn't Gold Paladins. I didn't fight Gold Paladins that day. I fought... Fudge, what was it? Wasn't Link Joker. Because I don't remember locking. Um, it couldn't have been, it had to be some kind of a meta deck, I can't really remember it, like, it escapes my mind at this moment, I really can't remember, but it doesn't matter, so that's pretty much it, that's all that it is with this deck profile, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you, ah, it's Kagura, it was Kagura that I was fighting, there you go, that's what it was, it was Kagura, alright guys, so, hope you enjoyed, I will be trying to do more videos later. I will actually try to make a video with this to be trying to uh, do more funny things later on with a better camera, not with this piece of crap uh, laptop camera. I'm going to try to use my camcorder. I couldn't set up my camcorder right now for the fact that the stand is broken. But alright, see you guys later. Uh, please rate, comment, subscribe, take, take care.